Praise the Lord. So good to see you all tonight. You can stand, sit, however you want to. We just want to worship you to worship the Lord with us tonight. Amen. It's been a highway for the King. Let's make His praise beautiful. It's been a highway for the King. Let's make His praise.
said, I am the way. Thank God for Jesus tonight. Amen. Well, it's good to see y'all. I turn around and wave at somebody on both sides behind me for tonight. Just say hello. I'm going to believe it's not going to be long for we won't be able to hug one another. <laughs> uh, and just greet one another. I guarantee when they get through it, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be really nice. You're going to like it. But uh, I'm not going to tell you anymore because let it be a surprise. And you will like it, I guarantee you. Ready to give tonight? Got your gift with you? Always plant the seed. Thank you for your gift.
this fall like weather. I'll tell you, that's the way it ought to be the year round, right? <laughs> you don't like it. You like hot weather. <laughs> Cold weather's coming in. <laughs> it is. Well, we're going to get right into the Word tonight. We've been teaching on a series called Living and Walking by Faith. I believe this is the third lesson on it. And so we want to take up from where we were last week. Now, we said, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, We walk by faith, not by sight. Then Romans and Galatians and Hebrews, they say the just shall live by faith. And then Habakkuk 2, 4 says, The just shall live by his faith. Then 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life. So the way you lay hold of eternal life is to lay hold of the things of God that has been provided for us through Jesus Christ. It's not just getting to heaven, but laying hold of the benefits of being a Christian. Taking hold of those benefits and walk in them and live in them. So we're talking about living and walking by faith. So let's review from last time and then we'll take off from where we left off and go from there. But last time we said that the faith fight is the only fight that we're to engage in because we're not fighting against people. Paul said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. So with our faith, we can overcome and whip the devil. Amen? 1 John 5, 4 says, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And God expects us to use our faith by using our words and speaking his word. You know, Jesus used words. Jesus talked the stuff all the time. I mean, he talked to trees and he talked to a number of different things. But see, we got to speak to our problem. We got to talk to our problem. We got to talk to our situation without doubting in our heart. Faith works. Say that. Faith works. Now, we're called to live by something that he tells us that we're to fight with. And that is the good fight of faith. Now, Satan will attack your faith. It's not God trying, trying you or testing you. See, James says when a man is tested, it's not by God. So the devil's trying to find out where you are in your faith, to see how you react and see what you do. Then we said there are three phases of faith. This is where we left off. Three phases of faith. But Jesus also made some outstanding, I mean some outstanding faith statements like, have faith in God. He said, if thou canst believe. He said, all things are possible to him that believe it. Your faith has made you whole, was one of those statements. Then he asked the disciples one time, he says, where is your statement? And in each of these statements, there is revealed a truth. Now, what is that truth? Three things. Number one, that faith is a fight to stay in the arena of the unseen. You have to fight to stay in the arena of the unseen. Number two, faith is not looking at things perceived by your senses. Number three, no man looks at appearance if he believes God. Smith Wigglesworth said, no man can look at appearance if he believes God. See, that's the same truth, same principle. See, that is the same truth that is made in all of these statements that Jesus made to different people. That no man looks at appearance if he believes God. So you cannot look at your paycheck. Come on. You cannot look at your checkbook always. 
You cannot always look at your bank account to see where you are financially with God. You can't look at the doctor's report sometimes. You cannot look at the growth on your breast or growth on your arm. You have to look at the Word of God. You can't even look at your husband or your wife or your children, how they're acting. <laughs> we are to look at the Word of God. No man looks at appearance and believe God. Now, Thomas said he wouldn't believe until he saw, right? You know the story. Jesus said, Thomas... You have seen and therefore you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. We are to live and walk by faith. Now, there's three kinds of faith that we're going to look at. And I briefly mentioned one of these last week and we'll pick up from there. But claiming faith. Claiming faith says, I believe I have received. That's in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things have you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's claiming faith. What am I supposed to claim? In and everything that is consistent with the word of God and a godly life. Healing is mine. You can claim that. Prosperity is ours. You can claim that. Health and joy, we can claim it. People still out there knocking us and saying things like, there's those claim it and hang it, hang it and frame it people. I say, yeah, I'm guilty. I claim the word of God. And I know I have stood on the word of God for years and years, and I know that it works. So number two is waiting faith. And then number three, we have receiving faith. So the three kinds of faith is claim, wait, and receive. The waiting faith is the hardest faith. <clears throat> that is from the time uh, in between that you prayed and then you received. And during that time, in between time, is when you are to praise God and just worship God. You don't just keep on asking God for the same thing over and over and over. You believe when you pray, you already receive it. See, that's faith. You have to believe that you got it. That's the reason you're believing it. Because you don't have any physical evidence of it yet. The only evidence you have is the promise of the word of God. And you go around and you're thanking God. You're praising him. You say, Lord, I thank you that that belongs to me. I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my bills being paid. The waiting stage is the hardest. Because sometimes in the waiting stage, you might even have to do without some things. You might not always be able to get the furniture you want. Come on. You might not be able to take the trips and the vacations right at that moment that you want. And some people just can't wait. But if you learn how to wait and endure hardness as a good soldier, then you will come to that third stage, and that is receiving faith. You praise God, I got it. I, I know it was coming. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I believe I receive. Anything you're believing for tonight? Anything you believe you rece you've already re received it by faith? Lift your hands and thank God you already got it. If you're believing for healing, prosperity, whatever it is, go ahead and thank him for it in advance. <laughs> you got to praise God for it. So we want to walk in that third phase of receiving faith but you first have to have claiming faith and waiting faith is that right and we also have to understand now let's get into this we have we have to understand that we have enemies of our faith there are faith destroyers there are things that try to destroy your faith and you can't fight the good fight of faith if you're, if you're ignorant of what God's word says. So let's look at some of the destroyers or enemies of our faith. How many of you know you got enemies? And so we're going to look at some of the enemies or the destroyers of our faith. Number one is a lack of knowledge of God's word. You ought to be taking notes. 
a lack of knowledge of God's word. Hosea 4, 6 said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. How are they destroyed? Not knowing what God has promised us. Proverbs eleven nine 9 says, Through knowledge the just shall be delivered. Too many Christians are living far below their privilege and rights in Christ, not knowing what belongs to them. Say this, the blessing of Abraham comes upon me and overtakes me. See, we are heirs according to the promise. Have you ever read how blessed Abraham was? The Bible didn't just say he had, a lot, he had plenty of goods. The Bible said he was rich, and then it uses this superlative, very rich. Abraham was very rich, and we are heirs of the promise of God, and we are blessed through Abraham. Growing up, I didn't have this knowledge. I was whipped, I was sick, I was defeated, but I found out I don't have to be whipped no more. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, search the scriptures because they testify of me. And the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. There's a difference in study and just reading, casually reading. Study means you might have to burn the midnight oil sometime. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman, not a lazy man, but a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Number two, here's another destroyer, a lack of confidence in the integrity of God. That's a destroyer of our faith. And when we don't have confidence in God's integrity, then we won't act like his word is true. When you don't have confidence in God's integrity, you won't give your tithes and offerings. Come on. You won't act like God's word is true. You might give a dollar. You might throw $2 in and $5 in sometime. But none of that represents your tithes. Your tithes may be $50. It may be $100 or $200. I don't know. But you will give far less because you don't have confidence in God's integrity. You believe the word of a man. Come on. You know, the lawyer will tell you, we're going to win this case. And what do you do? You go around and telling everybody, we're going to win this case. We're going to win this case. And it's not over yet. But you take the word of a man. The doctor tells you, you're going to be okay. And what do you do? You go around and say, the doctor said, I'm going to be fine. The doctor said, I'm okay. The doctor's report said, everything's good. But I got another report. Who has believed our report, Isaiah said? He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes. Hallelujah, shout about it. We are healed. Go ahead and claim your healing right now. I am healed. Glory to God. I've been well, I've been sick, and I can tell you well is better. How many will agree? We take the word of a man, and then, for instance, somebody goes out looking a job, and the guy says, yeah, you're hired. Go to work next week. You go around telling everybody, I'm hired. I got a job. And you haven't even worked one day yet. You go around and say, I'm going to be making X amount of money, and you haven't even got a paycheck yet. Yet you won't believe God who said, I cannot lie. We'll believe the word of a man, take the word of a man, but sometimes we don't want to take the word of God. Number three, here's another destroyer of our faith. Needing something more than the word for support. I've heard people say, if, if just some of the pain would leave my body, I, 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 I know it's worth it. If I could just see my husband acting a little bit better. If I... If I could just believe that somebody, if somebody would just give me a hundred dollars, I, I, I know my faith is working in my realm of the finances. I'll just know. 
you're supposed to know anyway. You're supposed to know based on this. My God meets all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You got God's word on it. And the Bible said, don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you do not faint. You don't need any extra support. All you need is the word. This is all we need right here, folks. If we'll believe this, if we can believe the word of a man that can lie, come on. If we can believe the word of a person that don't always tell the truth, you ever known anybody to always tell the truth? But God always tells truth because he is true and he cannot lie. And yet when it comes to the word of God, sometimes we just find it hard to believe. You don't need something extra for support. All you need is the word. Well, if somebody just prophesy over me, prophecy is good. It could encourage you, but I'm going to tell you, I'm blessed when somebody will give a true prophecy over me, but if I don't ever get another prophecy from a man, I got a lap full of the word of God and what he prophesied about me and who he tells who I am in Christ. I don't need any other support. Well, if I could just have a feeling. You know, people all the time they want to have a feeling. I have never. People just go by feelings way, way too much when it comes to the spiritual side of things. I had a man one time, he's a preacher. He said, I, 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 I believe in faith, Brother Kenneth, but I, I just want to feel something sometime. I said, close your eyes. I ball my fist up like that. I'll give you something to feel. You know what I'm talking about? Always got to feel something. I, I, I just wish I could feel something. I learned that when I don't look for feelings, I probably have more. When you go around wanting to feel something, the devil's going to do everything he can to get you to feel something other than believing the Word of God. But that's all you need is the Word of God. Just, just let a crow fly across and, and, and somehow speak to me. Let, let's, just let a crowd, cloud form up there and I see Jesus and I know God is working in my behalf. You don't need anything but the Word of God. When you get to the place, that's what I need. That's all I need. God's word will put me over. And I look at the word. Don't look at what you can see out here in the natural, because that'll lie to you, but God's word can't. God can't lie. How many of you believe God can't lie? Well, if he said by his stripes you're healed, what are you going to believe? Yeah, but you don't look healed. No man looks at appearance and believes God. You have to look at what God's word said. Right? Number four. Destroyers of our faith. The tongue. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now, if the tongue is used in the right way, it brings life, it brings healing, it brings help, it brings peace, it brings joy. But if it's used in the wrong way, how can you use it in the wrong way? Gossiping. Look at somebody and say, he ain't talking about me. Backbiting. Tail barriers. So we can use the tongue as a destructive means. You go around saying, I'm sick. Have you ever noticed, folks? <laughs> Have you ever noticed folks that said, I'm sick, they are sick? Did you hear what I said? Do you get what I'm trying to get across? They say I'm sick. I'm just broke. I stay broke all the time. You know, I used to be, I used to be so uh, broke, I couldn't even pay attention. I was telling that story one time about before I come into some truth that I was 
I was, uh, you know, I was so broke I couldn't pay attention. And Mark Hankins told me, said, that's the reason you were broke. You didn't pay attention. I got to thinking about it. I said, that's right. <laughs> I, did, I, won't, I won't pay an attention to the word of God. See, we can just lightly take this message tonight and say, it's just another faith message. I've heard that before. And we don't get no stimulation out of that. But let me ask you something. Just because you heard it one time, how many of you know that don't mean you got it all? I eat steak every now and then. And I know what a steak tastes like. I can, I can in my mind right now, a good, nice, big, for me, about a six ounce. And for son, take about 12. <laughs> for son, you know what I'm talking about? For, oh, hey, good to have you tonight, man. I get with it. But how many of you know what that tastes like? How many of you know what uh, uh, a baked potato tastes like? With some sour cream, some butter, maybe a little salt and pepper on it. Mm. Some of you imagining one right now, piping hot right out of the oven. But just because I eat one potato and I know how it tastes doesn't mean... I'm not going to eat it again. The Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His word is good. Amen? So we got the taste of the word. Here's another enemy, and I'm going to wind this up a little bit. Focusing on evidence that comes through our senses. Do you remember when there was a famine in the land and the man of God prophesied, tomorrow by this time, everything is going to be good. And a military man for the king stood up and says, if you were to open the windows of heaven, this couldn't be. See, he was focusing on the physical evidence more than he was from the, the word from the prophet, from the man of God. God said, you'll see it, but you won't eat of it. Peter walked on the water until he perceived that the wind was boisterous. He got his eyes, Jesus said, come. He got out of the boat, started to walk, had his eyes on Jesus, but then he looked at the waves. He looked at the wind. He saw the boisterous wind. And what did he do? He took his eyes off of Jesus. And the Bible said he started to sink. And Jesus went and lifted him up. That's what happened when we get our eyes off of Jesus, off of the Word, and start focusing on our problems and the situations that are around us. Amen? Then number, here's, you write this down under number five. Focusing on evidence that comes to our senses, it usually chokes the word of God and produces worry. Did you know worry will choke the word? That's what Mark says, that the cares of this life and the lust of other things choke the word. The Bible tells us not to take care. Cast our cares over on God. And that's a hard fight sometimes. Because look, in the natural, you see all this stuff going on. And we're to walk by faith and not by sight. And it's a challenge. But did you know we are to walk by faith and not by sight? Because if you get to looking at everything around you and you're talking to problem and talking to situation, it'll choke the word right out of you. Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 6 when he was talking about don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear and all that. He said in, I believe it's in verse 31, Jesus said, take no thought saying. Now, a few verses up, he said, take no thought about what you're going to wear. Da -da 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 -da. Eat, how you're going to you know, make it in life. He said, take no thought. But then later on, he said, take no thought saying. Because it's when you say it that it gives life to it. Brother Hagin said, uh, a, a thought unspoken will die unborn. Even if a thought, negative thought hits your mind, don't let it come out of your mouth. Because when you let it come out of your mouth, it, the words give power to it. Jesus said, take no thought saying. Life and death are what? In the power of the tongue. So that's where most of us get in trouble. Well, 
I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to buy this kid's school clothes. I don't know how I'm going to pay this electric bill. I don't know where the next meal is coming from. You ever heard people say that? I don't have the next bill. And I could look at them and tell they hadn't missed one. <laughs> you have to reject, reject these thoughts that are contrary to the word of God. Take no thought saying. So I will always put the word of God above what comes to my senses. Remember, words unspoken will die unborn. And here's another one. Number six, you can have doubt in your head but faith in your heart. I heard Brother Hagin teach that from way, way back. And it helped me because doubt can come to your head. The devil tell you, you ain't going to get it. That ain't going to work out. You're going down the tube this time. You're not going to get healed. And see, all of that will come to your head. Doubt will come to your head. But Jesus didn't say, if you believe in your head. He said, if you believe in your heart. You can have doubt attacking your mind, your head. But if you believe it in your heart. And then you start saying what you believe in your heart. He said, it will come to pass. So Brother Hagin also said this, feed your faith and starve your doubts. See, your head can be telling you, uh, this is never going to work, this is never going to happen, but in your heart, you know God's word is true. Sometimes you just have to say, mind shut up. In fact, put your hands on your head right now and say, mind shut up. Because all of us have our mind to try to talk to us. Say, I'm going to feed on the word. I know God's word is true. So shut up, devil. Now praise God for his word being true. Hallelujah. God's word is true. Last one. Maybe, maybe the last one. Inconsistency in purpose. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can't be up and down and expect your faith to work. You ever seen people, you didn't know when you see them coming, you didn't know what mood they were going to be in. God said, I change not. He's always in a good mood. <laughs> And we're to be imitators of God, right? And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can't feed your spirit one day and then go three weeks without feeding your spirit man. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And here's another one, and this will be the last. A lack of patience. The Bible said, if you be willing and patient, you will receive the promise. Stand to your feet. You be willing and patient. And what are we going to do while we're waiting? Patience. We believe we receive. We're going to be patient, and we're going to thank the Lord in advance. We're just patient. Hallelujah. God, I just know if, you, if I see you do something by tomorrow, I know you're working. Well, I don't have to see it by tomorrow. It might not come tomorrow. It might not come the next day. But if I believe I, I'm, I'm standing on his word, I'm believing, and I believe that I'll be a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, it'll come to pass. A lack of patience, if you be willing in patience. Say, I'm claiming the word. I wait on the Lord. The word is working mightily in me. I receive the word. Therefore, I receive my healing. I receive the blessings. I receive peace of mind. I have confidence in your word, Lord. I am focusing on the word. I will not grow weary in well-doing. I'm staying on the word. I believe I receive right now in Jesus' name, so go ahead and thank him for it. Go ahead and thank him for it. I believe it's mine. I have it now. <laughs>
Glory to God. But see, these truths set my life free. So this is not just another little Bible lesson. You could take these uh, lessons that we talked about tonight, and if you would diligently apply them, it would change your whole life. It would turn your life from defeat to victory, from sickness to health, from worry to peace. You know, we live in a troubled world. Have you noticed we're in a troubled world? And I got to tell you something. The world's not going to get any better. But the church, the church of Jesus Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're going to get stronger. We're going to get better. And we're going to show the world we are the light of the world and they're going to come to God. I believe there is a mighty move and a mighty revival of God coming and I want to be right smack dab in the middle of it. Do you? Let's thank God for that in advance. Let's thank Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is setting things up right now. You may not know it, but some of the things you're seeing, you go, <laughs> but God's setting it up. It's a setup. And you're going to see people that you never thought give their life to God. Their life's going to turn around. You're going to think things that could never happen in this nation because you go by what's going on out here. But I'm telling you, God has got his hands on the United States of America. And there is coming a move of God that's going to shake us. But I'm telling you, it's only going to come to those that are thirsty, those that are hungry, those that want it. How many want it? If you want it, shout it three times. I want it. Do you really want it? Give him the biggest shout. I want it. Woo, glory to God. God's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Whew. As Brother Hagin said, I done preached myself happy. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. I got the word. I got the word. Don't need any kind of evidence. If I, if I get some kind of evidence, I mean, you know, it's good to feel things. It's good to see things. But faith will never work like it should unless you make that the final authority in your life. I'm standing on God's word, and it'll come to pass. Thank him for his word. Glory to God. Well, we got to go home. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for listening. Take these principles. Listen to them over and over, and I'll guarantee you, you'll live a life of victory in Jesus' name. God bless. See you Sunday morning.